Hello everybody and welcome to our first tutorial video about the game New World. If you don't know what New World is, it's a brand new MMO from Amazon Game Studio. Uh, one of the first official things they're launching in a big way. I have had the pleasure of taking a bunch of time here in the closed beta. So I will say right at the top, a lot of our information in this video is from the closed beta. I will update you all in the comments and in the um, description on whether things have changed from now until the game releases. I will also do more videos to then retroactively talk about what we've talked about here, uh, especially if things have changed majorly. Um, I happen to be part of the Battle for New World event going on on the server Yama, which is uh, 33 streamers competing against each other and 11 on each of the factions, which we're going to talk about in a second. And uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of points to be done. But the point is, we've t me and um, my Twitch chat and company and stuff like that have put a lot of hours into this game so far, and we've done our very best to find out as much information as possible so that y'all can learn and get some cool stuff. Um, so I hope that our hours have paid off, and we're going to be talking today about territories. What the heck are territories? Um, territories are obviously uh, territories on the map that, um, that can be claimed. They're claimable zones. There are 11 claimable zones. In fact, I'm going to show you guys right here. There are 11 claimable zones. We have uh, one claimed by the Covenant, one, two, three, four claimed by the Marauders, and one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six claimed by the Syndicate. Um, those are the three factions, by the way. You can join any of them as long as you do your story mission. And they are originally all grayed out because just like this one, except for these three are not claimable. Those we'll talk about in a later video. Um, but those are basically, these are end game zones and they have events called, um, called the outpost, outpost rush, which is 20 V 20 PVP stuff that is, uh, specifically for level sixties and above. So that's going to change and level 60 being the, the cap. So that's going to, that's going to change, uh, how you look at these zones a little bit. And plus, if you just go up here and do PVE stuff, it's actually very difficult as well. Um, there's also some dungeons up here for PVE, PVE as well which we'll talk about in a, again in a later video. There's a lot of information in here. So let's start with what territories are. Territories are literally spots that you can capture with your company. Your company is your guild. Um, your guild can consist of 100 people and you can go in and capture these territories. If it's unclaimed, like I said before, it costs 100,000 gold, which gold is not very... It's, it's not like every other MMO where you, you use gold for basically everything. Most of this game is about crafting materials. So the gold you get is from doing missions, from doing quests, from doing the town board and, co and c faction quests. I almost said covenant because that's our faction, but faction quests and all kinds of things. That's how you get gold. And you can literally send it to anybody on the server at any time from anywhere, which is great. So if you're in a guild or maybe you're, you're helping another guild out to capture a zone, you can just send them money straight up um so once you capture a zone it becomes yours and then you'll see these bars that are here um they'll be the color of your faction um you have to join a faction by the way and that like i said that will go through the story quest um you'll see the colors of your faction and there's two bars there the top bar and the bottom bar are essentially the same thing except for since there's two other factions that can attack you one bar will be filled by one color the other bar will be filled by the other color depending on how on how the influence goes there you get influenced by doing PvP quests in that zone. You can take PV you can take quests in any zone. You can do anything anywhere. Nothing really matters as far as doing PvE stuff in that zone. The thing that does matter um, in the PvE section is your storage. So in each zone, you get a storage. And in that storage, it is tied to that zone and that that settlement, that territory. So you can only grab stuff in there. They're, there's usually two, and they're by two of the different uh, faction or collection stations. So you have all this, and obviously you have a maximum amount of weight you can put in there. You can have a house. Uh, eventually, we'll get to that in a second. On whether or not uh, you buy that, that's up to you. I recommend buying houses. Um, you can buy up to three when you get to max level, and I would recommend doing them in pretty sparse locations. I wouldn't put them right next to each other because you get a fast travel like this right here, recall the house that um, cools down to four hours, but it's also very easy to just use your Azoth, which is your basically your traveling energy that drops from everywhere um, to, to shorten that timer. 
um, but that's that's relevant to this video. So, um, the territories, once you've taken it over, it becomes yours, and they can be attacked, like I said, through PvP quests. There's also a big PvE section to this game and to these territories um, that are amongst that. So, like I said, you have the the storage that happens here, but what's cool is if you have two territories next to each other, in fact, we'll look at the syndicate here, if one, two, three, four territories all connected. So this faction, if you're in this faction, you can then go to any of these territories and access your storage throughout all territories. So having connecting territories is super important. So if I come here and I go look at my storage, I can then see the storage in all of these territories. But if someone were to come through, like let's say the Marauders wanted to connect their territories, and they wanted to come and say, take Everfall, here, right in the middle, I now have to, I now have separated my connection. If I wanted to grab something from Windsward, I'd have to go to Windsward to grab it. If I wanted to grab something from Brightward, I'd then have to leave Windsward and go to Brightward to then collect it. I still have connection to Evanscale, but those that that connection between all of these have been broken which is a good part of why pvp and pve should be working together you may be somebody like myself who prefers pve um i do dabble in pvp but that that changes a little bit you don't have to do one or the other you can pick one solely and stick with it it's going to be a little bit harder to level in pvp only but you can do it um the pvp quests are more xp than the pve quests but you kind of get less of them, and you also have to depend on other people doing stuff. Um, actually, you don't even have to, really, honestly. Um, you, you're, the PvP quests are literally just doing kind of PvE quests while uh, flagged for PvP. You, you, can turn, you never have to flag for PvP if you don't want to. You can run through all the zones and never have to worry about a single person fighting you at all. You do have to worry about people trying to take, your, take like nodes from like iron and stuff that you're trying to gather yourself, but... That's, that's, you know, that's its own thing. So, let's talk about what you do in each zone, and why it matters to be in each zone, and to actually do work in each zone. So, I've spent a lot of time in First Light, and I've done a lot of quests in First Light, because, well, it benefits my faction. Um, you, the more you do and the more things that you accomplish, you get a territory standing. So basically, like, when you're getting XP, you're also getting territory XP. So if I look at First Light, which is here, I then have something that shows up that says, I get to pick one of three things and upgrade that, essentially. So, all right, now you can see what I'm at, at 19.1 reduction in what it costs to use the stations here in First Light, which is huge because the, the governor, which is the guild leader, that takes over that territory and owns that territory pretty much gets to run all the decisions that get made to upgrade stations, to set the taxes, to set all kinds of things in there. Um, they can't change your storage or anything like that, but they get to choose when they upgrade each station and how much they charge for each station itself. So I'm now at level 23, and now I get a bonus of one of these three things. Right now, I'm at 100 storage in my, in my storage. I want to upgrade that because I have the most stuff here because I always want to be here. This is actually where I bought my first house. It's a starter home. It's not very big, but it's my first house. So I'm going to pick storage. That's going to upgrade a little bit. Um, I've been working a lot in Windsward and Cutlass Keys lately, which are Cutlass Keys and Windsward. So I've got a bunch of things here. So as you can see, there's different options that show up. I'm actually still going to take um, some storage here. I, I uh, at first was picking a lot of XP, but in reality, the XP doesn't really do too much in, in short bursts. In long bursts, I think it does. So XP is like killing animals, killing de like bad guys, um, doing the quest themselves. But for the most part, you're going to kind of know what kind of XP you're going to get from the town board quest. And that's what we'll show in a second. But um, I would say that you're more more benefited to go towards uh, station fees if you want to save gold, or even, I've done a lot of gathering speed. So increase your gathering speed by 16.3% in Kala's Keys. That means you can gather more, and you can run around and continue gathering. So uh, trading tax is big if you do trading. Trading is a little bit, um, like I said, not a big deal in this game, because it's one, you can only trade within the town. So if somebody wants to 
trade it's not a global um it's not a global auction house each town has its own auction house uh, i don't think they connect through territories but they might i'd have to look into that one that's a good question that i just kind of thought of um but faction quests or faction tokens is a big thing which we'll go into in a second i'm not going to pick that right now i'm going to pick storage because cutlass keys is a big um, crafting section for me as well i'm going to stick with gathering speed i'm going to go storage again i'm going to go gather uh, i'm going to go storage again and that's all the, that's all the xp i have there so that gives me bonuses there so basically the more you work in those territories the better and more efficient you're going to be. Um, if you're new to a territory, it's going to be a little slower. But the more you do it, the better it is. Once you get to a certain standing um, with a territory, the options you will get in order to buy a house. So like one of these houses. So I need 30 first light standing in order to buy this house and 20,000 gold. Which you may not think is a lot, but we've put a lot of hours into this section. And we're at level 23. So it takes a while. Now, that's just for that house. There are cheaper houses, especially in First Light, where uh, in one of the ones that I purchased, which is here, located right in the center of town, that required, I believe, only 10 or 15 um, before I was able to purchase it. So I purchased this house. You can decorate it. You can do whatever. It's pretty great. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. I love it. Um, the big thing about housing is, like I said before, it gives you another recall point. So you can fast travel from any of the towns or um, fast travel locations. There's usually only one of each in each, in each zone. Or you can recall to your house or you can be a part of that inn. You can go check in at that inn and recall to the inn. Each thing has its own timer. I think all inns have 60 minutes and then houses have like four hours. Um, but you can always lower the rate of, uh, the, lower the time from the, ho from the house. I have my hotel room at the Cutlass Keys, which is great. So there are bonuses where you're going to want to be working in your faction's town. There's this cart right here, which is huge. Food is a very rare commodity uh, in this game. I don't know why, but you can find a lot of food, but it's kind of random on which food you get for the most part. Um, crafting food and cooking is very difficult. I've done a lot of it, but it has been a big pain in the butt because there is a lot, there are a lot of different materials you put into uh, cooking. I've got my cooking to 148, but it, like, these are all the recipes. And each recipe has, like, sometimes up to four or five different items, and you're always missing, like, one item. So, it's very important to utilize this cart as much as possible. If your faction does not own that territory, you cannot use this cart, which is very important. You cannot use this cart if your faction doesn't own it. So, working in and going to your faction's cart and your faction's territory often is very, very important. There aren't vendors or anything. These are quest givers. So, you can't really sell for gold. But you can go to the, uh, the town trading board. And if somebody's selling something, well, then you can buy it. Or you can sell it. Or you can do absolutely whatever you want with it. There's a ton of stuff. So, um, that is essentially what it's like to PvE in your territory. You can go to your, your faction leader, which for us is the Covenant, which is around the corner there. So here is the Covenant faction leader. Um, you have a faction leader in each town. It doesn't matter who, who runs the town. There's a faction leader in each town, or a faction representative, rather. Um, this is the faction leader for the Covenant. Usually the Covenant is in a church. I don't know why First Light has him hanging out outside. But he's usually in a church because uh, that's sort of the theme of the, of the faction, um, of the Covenant at least. If you go here, you have two sections, like I was talking about earlier. If you want to start gaining influence on an enemy territory or start breaking down the influence of your own, of the enemy influence of your own territory, you start doing PvP missions. Uh, as you can see here, it's not like go out and kill five players. It's legitimately help deliver the good news of the spark, which is go deliver a message to another NPC. Happens that that NPC is probably located somewhere uh out here somewhere and if you, in this the perk is or the quirk is essentially you have to queue up for pvp meaning if if you get killed on the way there you lose the quest or you lose at least the completion of the quest you can go try it again but if you do other things along the way that are pvp missions and you die you have to start all over again which is part of the 
which is part of the PvP aspect of it. If people are trying to gain influence, you're going to want to be killing them because they could be on a quest and you could be ending their quest progression. So it's very important to do that. You could do the PvE stuff, which is worth a little bit less um, XP and tokens. But um, if you're a PvE, P PvE player, it's great. Um, if you're a PvE player, this is less important to you. This next part is less important to you, but it is still important, especially if you're behind on gear. Let's say you're not doing the expeditions, which are the, which are the dungeons in this, in this game. Um, you should be still doing some of these so that you can gain both tokens and rep. Rep unlocks the tiers of items that you can buy. Tokens allow you to buy them along with some gold. So the gear that you find in here, you'll see stuff that is, that is pretty much for your weapon class or whatever archetype you've, you've kind of chosen to go with. You can buy them, they'll upgrade stuff for you, they'll have your faction colors and stuff like that. They're meant mostly for PvP, but if you're behind in, in gear, it works for PvE as well. So keep that in mind. You can also buy corruption elixirs, which are great for uh, going to fight corruption and blight and some big healing potions and mana elixirs and all kinds of stuff. It's really all important if you want to do this, you can. As you can see, I'm wearing the Templar gear um, here. So the Templar gear is the second tier of stuff. The more influence you get and the higher level you get, you'll get missions that unlock like the Exubitor or the Lumen or the Educator. And that basically is like, it's like your rank within the faction essentially. Um, right now, I'm only a Templar. I've not been working on this very much, but essentially, if you want gear or you want items from there, this is how you get them. And you use your faction tokens by, or you get faction tokens by doing faction missions, and you use them right there. You could do that in any territory. Every territory is going to be different, but your faction rep is going to stay the same, and it's always going to upgrade no matter where you do them. So if you, if they're also they're pretty good XP. So I would go, I would do those as well. Um, if you when a governor owns or their their company owns runs this town a town which is uh, currently run by sequisha and his gesh den um you can go help the town by doing board quests which happens to be one of the best ways to gain xp i'll also do a video on it on gaining xp and leveling up you can do these town quests these board quests if you see this bar that's not filled you're you're actively working towards upgrading something right now it's upgrading upgrade outfitting station to tier five outfitting station is one of the crafting tables um the tiers allow you to do more stuff like gives you more access to different um schematics and, and recipes and stuff like that so it's important to do that especially in the ones in the towns where your faction owns it so working on this is very powerful it maxes out and it gets to a point where you can't give it any influence and you have to wait for the governor's uh, cooldown to go by usually you can only it, the cooldown is every 24 hours so uh once this 20 once this is done and the 24 hour cooldown is up the governor will then switch this out for a new thing and you'll do very similar missions over and over again um not like they're all similar but you'll see like kind of get 15 common potions make this piece of food go look for this thing go cull some animals go do all kinds of stuff i mean actually i have these i'm gonna turn these in they give you a ton of XP. They're very, very valuable. They're very important. So they're good not only for upgrading the town, but they're good for leveling yourself up. It's rather important. I would do these whether I was PvP or PvE focused. So make sure you work on those. When a war hits, meaning a, an enemy faction or your faction have um, declared war on a territory, you have to go to that territory and go to the war board and sign up for something. So right now, this is the big thing. This is end game PVE right here. Or almost end game, pretty much. But it's pretty much end game. Um, level 50 is 10 levels behind the max level, but it is still very high and very hard to get to. This is a large 50 person high scale wave based PVE fight. Everybody that's level 50 can sign up for it. The governor will get to choose who gets to be part of it, and it will be scheduled. They will come in waves. It's very difficult. And what happens after the invasion is pretty much nothing. Um, nothing really happens. Nothing negative, at least, happens. Um, it's really mostly if you can win, you get a bunch of really good loot and gear and stuff like that. The problem is it's almost impossible to win unless you have the best gear in the game. So 
uh, make sure that you are gearing up. And if you want to get a part of that, it's helpful. It doesn't hurt you. It won't it won't hurt your territory. You want to get as much people in there as possible. And if you do win, you get some really cool stuff. I I we haven't had anybody win. In fact, throughout this closed beta, it's been said by the devs that more than like nearly it's nearly impossible to be done in this closed beta. Um, so that's actually really end game stuff. Um, after that. You have wars. So we have an upcoming war here, which I'm involved in. And that is scheduled for, let's see, can we see it here? Yes, that is between both the Alpha Romeo Redo and Infamous. So this, this uh, Alpha Romeo Redo is the, uh, the company that owned the territory. They're who originally, oh, sorry, I did that backwards. Infamous is who owns the territory. They're the ones that originally took this over uh, at the beginning of the game. And has and now now is defending against the Alpha Romeo Redo, which is the um, company owned by Fairlight Excalibur, who's uh, also on our squad. You can see by the colors which faction they're on. So the Marauders are defending, and the Covenant is attacking. This shows you what they have here. This is what their town is. Um, it's very very good to look at this, especially if you if this town maybe doesn't have your your the current towns you have maybe maybe they have different tables that are. A lot more upgraded than yours so you want to take that over because it's valuable to you both in um, pve and pvp that's what you would do when you attack or defend in a war those are 50 versus 50 um the defenders have a little bit of an advantage because well they have to defend their territory and uh you have to it, we'll get into that a little bit later we had our first one the other day it was crazy um but we'll we'll obviously have a different video on that that is essentially territories that is that is territories there there are so many things you can do here um taking over territories is essentially the basic gameplay loop of the entire game um it's very difficult to take a territory it's very uh it's you a lot of time has to go into it a lot of coordination between you and your faction has to go into it there's essentially a lot of stuff happening so a lot of stuff is also going to change from now until the game's release. Again, I will put in the comments whether or not I've changed, if with something has changed, I will update it as much as possible. And if you look in the description, I'll put sort of patch notes if they're, if they're relative to this video. If you have any questions or, or you'd like to see more on territories, or if you'd like to see more on this game in general, please leave that in a comment below. If you enjoyed this video at all, leave it a like. And uh, make sure you subscribe for more because we're going to do a lot more. Um, and we have, I have a whole list of videos we're going to make. And it's going to be, it's, the game's going to be great. Um, but I'm excited for the release. And I hope you are too. Until next time, I'll see you later. Goodbye.